So this is something I wanted to talk about a few days ago when it happened, but I felt like it deserved its own video since it will be a longer video, so let's just jump into this situation. Which brings us over to Whole Alive English's Sarah's Fauna, who while playing Minecraft a few days ago received a super chat that reads a quote from Griffith that states, quote, for me to call a man my friend, he must be equal to me in all respects. The super chatter then asked Fauna whether she agreed with this statement and if she could befriend a sapling or not. Once Fauna got to this super chat, she had this to say. We as Fauna Fauna and saplings, we cannot be friends and we shouldn't be friends. There's a lot of reasons. <laughs> it is, I think, important for boundaries to be maintained. I am here to entertain you and that is all, really. And if you can have a good time here, then that makes me happy. Now that small clip could pretty much sum up everything Fauna said next, but I think it's best to show a few more things she stated before getting into the fallout in the comment section. That's if I'm, if I'm being really real. Which maybe, I don't know, did you want me to be real? <laughs> And this goes for every streamer, I think. I don't know. I used to really... Because I've always liked YouTubers and stuff. And I used to look at YouTubers and be like... Oh my god, if only I could be their friend. Like, I really wish I could be their friend. That would be so cool. But as I've gotten older, I've realized, like... There's nothing particularly like special or that amazing that makes a YouTuber different from anyone else. Like, a YouTuber... Does that just because they're a YouTuber doesn't mean that they'll be a good friend to you or to anyone. So the people that you know in your life, your friends, they can be better friends to you than any YouTuber can be. And they're just as cool. They have just as many like interesting ideas and cool traits about themselves than the YouTubers that you admire do. I think it's easy to look at YouTubers and admire them, but I promise if you look at your friends with the same lens, you'll also see like the cool things about your friends that makes your friends special too. But yeah, I think I understand because I used to always watch YouTubers and want to be their friend. And I think that's normal to some extent, but it's important to keep in mind that I'm just here to stream and hopefully entertain you or make your day better in some way. And I promise it's better that way. <laughs> You should cherish your friends in your life. I don't recommend trying to befriend streamers. I just don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like that's not going to end well for anybody. If I'm just being completely honest, which I <laughs> will be. <laughs> but that shouldn't, that shouldn't make you sad. Because like the best way to enjoy a streamer is to just watch their streams and have fun, you know? I'm sure you've heard the, the saying, like, don't meet your heroes, you know? Like, I don't think that necessarily applies to everybody. But I think it's good if you can just watch a streamer and enjoy their streams for what they are. There's nothing particularly special about streamers. I mean, like, sure, like, maybe you look at a streamer and they're, like, great at singing. But, like, does that make them a better friend? No. You know, it doesn't. It's important for you guys not to neglect your real lives too, you know? Put yourself number one, always. I'm just some silly streamer on the internet. And so after that stream was over and people learned of what Fauna has said, a lot of people weren't the happiest of people as they started leaving comments such as this that read, quote, Fauna always wanted to seem smart, but the level of cognitive dissonance that would be required for her to actually believe, quote, oh, I'm just another entertainer like a late night TV show host is dumb. And she's not that dumb. Quote, if you want me to be real, I'll be real, said the woman in a fake cutesy uwu voice hiding behind a mother nature anime girl avatar who was supposedly 4.5 billion years old and named Fauna. No, no Nobody wants you to be real. That's why we don't know your real name or your real age or what you really look like. Nobody is interested in that, which is why you couldn't find a job doing this as yourself. Why would we want your real opinions? You are selling an illusion. It is your job to sell that illusion. Breaking that illusion does nothing but maybe soothe your conscience about draining money from weak men. Except as weak as those men are, they aren't so weak as to not know what they signed up for. They willingly and knowingly allow themselves to be exploited for the fantasy. What you did breaking the fantasy is actually crueler, but maybe her intentions were good. Maybe she wanted to help them. No, she wanted to feel morally superior. I'll give her credit here. She's shown herself to be pretty smart. There's no way she didn't know all this already, that we want to be fooled, we want to dream, and that her job is to provide that. Another commenter said, quote, I'm not going to pretend you'll be your biggest fan here. I put your streams on when there's no one else streaming in Holo EN, but you are a mascot character like Chuck E. Cheese. The character Fauna is not you. Fauna by 
by and large is the interpretation that the audience have created in their heads that you, Asagi Sensei, and Cover Corp have curated together as a way to sell an experience that the audience can relate to in merchandise. This rant is you trying to say that you are Fauna, that your fans don't have a right to interpret you in whatever way they want. Imagine if the actor in a Chuck E. Cheese outfit told kids at the restaurant that they shouldn't be trying to win any prizes because it's a potentially harmful outlook for their mental growth and that they should just enjoy their time with the games themselves and not the outcomes. I sincerely believe you made a misstep in what your position is as a corporate mascot streamer. It's understandable if you don't find the fan base particularly healthy, but you are not an independent streamer who is streaming as themselves. The character Fauna should not be damaging the imaginary relationship she has with her fans and making a reason for the community to argue with each other about healthy ways to support Fauna. And another says, hey Fauna, I've been thinking about your response to the quote Real Talk Super Chat since last night, and although I don't disagree with what you said, I feel the need to get my thoughts about it off my chest. I do agree that the most healthy way for streamers and fans to engage is with the understanding that neither will know each other on a personal level. That much should be obvious. Logistically, it's impossible for a streamer to personally know each of their fans and take interest in their lives. And conversely, a viewer should inherently know that a streamer is an entertainer first and foremost. I guess what's got me hung up is that you addressed it at all. And to be 100% honest, even though I don't view the sapling slash fauna dynamic as being or aspiring to be personal friends, it's still kind of stung to hear you say it out loud. Just like any given person, I deal with a lot of medical, financial, and social stresses in my everyday life. And I'm certainly not suggesting that it's specifically your job to alleviate that, of course, but I do watch streamers, VTubers or not, as a form of escapism. So although I don't believe that streamers should be a substitute for real interactions, it is hurtful to be reminded that a part of your life is lacking while you're trying to distract yourself from that fact. Again, while I don't think your answer to the super chat was wrong or bad, I do think it was unnecessary and would have been better off ignored. Sorry for the long-winded response. I hope you don't find it disrespectful. Thanks as always for the stream. Also another that reads, quote, I think expecting Fauna to answer that question by saying, oh yeah, I'll totally befriend random ass saplings. I can realistically be friends with all of my 700,000 subscribers is delusional. I don't know what people were expecting her to say. She's absolutely right that the woman whose name you don't know and you don't even know where she lives and she doesn't know you exist can't realistically be a personal friend. And she's also right that if you're too dependent on an internet lady pretending to be a Kieran is your friend, it's time to take a step back and focus on people who actually know you. That being said, describing watching her or any streamer as just entertainment is, while strictly speaking accurate, extremely tone deaf. Comparing watching Holo Live to watching a movie or a sports game is asinine. People watching Guardians of the Galaxy aren't buying Chris Pratt Dokimakuras, and people watching the Kansas City Chiefs aren't buying Pat Mahomes voice packs. The way Fauna makes a living is off indulging the collective fantasies of her fan slash customers. I know it takes nuance to understand, but Fauna will never be your friend, girlfriend, mommy as an individual, but her whole career is based off fostering intimacy with her fan base as a collective. And now, not all of the comments are giving Fauna too much shit for this, as some fans are actually happy that she made this clear and addressed everything, with them saying things like, quote, even though that troll ultimately wanted to get a response out of you, I believe you handled it very well. As much as it might help people, escapism is not healthy. The question was basically set up so that either way you replied, people would be angry at you. We can all have fun here, but at the end of the day, your sole purpose is to entertain. It's better to say that than to let people spiral deeper into the, that toxic behavior. Another said, quote, thought I should leave a comment and say that my respect for you has shot through the roof after this comment, and I already had a lot of respect for you. To me, it's the Sign of a mature, very kind, and well-meaning person. You're a great entertainer, and we appreciate the part of you that you share with us. It would be impossible to be friends with each individual sapling, and it would be unfair to befriend some, but not others. But as a whole, the saplings are important to nature in the same way nature is important to the saplings. And we'll read one more opinion here that says, quote, about Fauna's serious talk. From what I can see, most people who liked it are focused on the word she used, especially the word friend. Those who were bothered by it, including myself, are more focused on the underlying sentiment. Lengthy chats about setting boundaries and changing one's behavior don't suddenly come up when both parties are comfortable with each other. No matter the words used, it gives off the impression that Fauna is unhappy with her relationship with the saplings and feels it needs to change. This is obviously going to make some viewers uncomfortable, so it should be no surprise that there are people in the comments saying, quote, yeah, I know that, but why did you say it? They were just enjoying the stream and Fauna suddenly laid down a boundary out of nowhere. This strongly suggests that there's a problem and they didn't think there was a problem, so now they're confused. A lot of people are blaming the trolls, 
super chat and it does deserve blame, but I'm not sure Fauna handled it as well as others are claiming. This wasn't just a passing mention before moving on to the next super chat. Fauna rolled up her sleeves, did a double wind up, if you want me to be real, I'll be real, and then stuck to the topic for 12 minutes. There were many opportunities to drop the topic or to never start it in the first place. Her insistence on continuing the discussion just furthers the feeling that there was a problem in Fauna's head and she was trying to resolve it, not just talking about the abstract concepts of a relationship between viewers and streamers. The bottom line is, Fauna took the type of talk that inevitably makes some fans uncomfortable and casually dropped it into the middle of Super Chat reading. Did she choose that moment to get building concerns with her fan base off her chest, or did the intellectual in her just really feel the need to answer the Super Chat's deep question in detail? Maybe a mix of both. Nobody but Fauna will ever know. I'm not about to rant and rave about being betrayed by Fauna and never watching her again, but I think there's room for criticism in how she handled the discussion. The topics of a relationship and boundaries aren't good choices to spontaneously toy around with. And so in this type of situation, a lot of people are just split as to whether it was necessary for Fauna to go on a lengthy discussion with her fans or not, but in my personal opinion, I think establishing boundaries is important when it comes to being a streamer. Was it the right time for her to do it? I don't know. But Fauna clearly set those boundaries for her fans to help them realize that all she's here to do is entertain them and try to make them happy while doing so. I know a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about parasocial relationships and whether they are good or not, so please just let me know what you think about all of that down below. I don't think Fauna was in the wrong to establish these boundaries, nor do I think she's wrong in saying that people shouldn't be so dependent on streamers to make them happy. But again, please let me know what you all think about this down below and make sure to hit that subscribe button and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.